There are some people in the community that are that guy that you have to look out for. The one that is horrible to play against. While they may be chased out of a local gaming club, they appear more often at tournaments that aren't just held among a group of friends in a local hobby center. But I have found Warhammer clubs to be very welcoming. Admittedly, this is as a polite young man with what some of you have called confidence. Some others have called it Riz. Your own results at 40k clubs may vary. But since 40k players are so welcoming and nice, why aren't we accommodating to the worst of the community? To that guy? To the ones that give the community a bad name? There aren't any guides on what to do to become that guy. Why not? Aren't we accepting? Is it really so bad to bring in the worst people and make them feel comfortable in the name of tolerance? Yes. That is bad. That guy makes a lot of people uncomfortable, and you will lose friends until all you're surrounded with are various versions of that guy. So this is a slightly touchy topic. I am sure that right now you are typing in the comments about the time you met that worst guy, but how bad these elements are and how far you go with them with gameplay will depend on your gaming group. Doing some of these occasionally doesn't mean you're a terrible person, but doing them a lot and often will leave you with a friend count somewhere in the region of zero. But just this once, and only this once, I wanted to do something for the aspiring that guys of the world and explain how to be the literal worst person to play at 40k. Of course you could use this as a guide of what to avoid doing, tidy up any bad habits you have and watch out for repeat offenders of these traits, call them out on it if you feel confident in doing so, to make your own gaming group better. This is intended as ironic fun, none of it is based on Dr. Crankenfoof. Let me put on my teaching glasses and let us begin. Step one is all about presentation. Now you may have come from work and still be in work clothes or it's a really hot day and you're a little bit sweaty. That is fine. Other people will be understanding of that. So as that guy, you need to go even further. Wear a shirt that is clearly political so any criticism of you or the army you play can be constructed as an attack on your personal political beliefs. The shirt must be well worn, ill fitting and smell in one way or another. Too much perfume is a smell, including cologne that comes in bottles like fist and gun. You have to uphold the glorious sweaty nerd stereotype. Make sure you tell people that you haven't showered in a while, claim to be the embodiment of Nurgle and then do your best to be really close to people. Be late. Don't apologize. Tell your opponent they're just early and say that you were sure that this was the correct time to start. Now, the 40k game is going to be a rush to finish and some of the fun is already pulled out of it. Excellent. Bring in or order food. Now, this is usually okay and depending on the gaming club, you'll be able to do that. But do remember, you want to be that guy. So get the greasiest, smelliest food. But that still may be fine. Now, obviously, you don't share the food, but that isn't necessarily a that guy behavior. The point is, you get sticky food on your hands and then you break other hobby rules. Touch your opponent's models. If you are indicating a unit you are targeting, make sure you touch them and touch them by the most fragile part of the model without permission, of course. Pick them up in one greasy hand and then criticize the paint job or the choice of model to buy. It's not a personal attack on your opponent. It's just an attack on something they hold very dear. And nothing is worse than insulting and damaging the expensive models that people have spent hours lovingly painting. Now accidents happen and people can be quite understanding of that, but make sure lots of accidents happen. So your opponent will have homework of re-gluing the models back together after the game. Remember, if they never play you again, it counts as a forever victory. Step two, how to talk to people. Don't. Make no small talk. In fact, barely even talk. Point at one of your units, then point at one of their units, and then roll some dice. That is the only way you're going to indicate you're attacking a unit. Be on your phone for a while and then look up occasionally and say, oh, is it my turn? Or, oh, what was I rolling? Show absolutely no interest in the game. As that guy, you have better places to be. And the mere mortals opposing you, they are worthless. But if you are going to speak, as that guy, there are some topics you can bring up. <laughs> Comment on the number of women at the club. If there are any, suggest that that is weird in a bad way. If there are none, comment on how great it is and then say something sexist. Better stop slandering my sisters a battle you've... 
right? Sorry. We're pretending to tolerate that kind of behavior today. Only today. Say something about an ongoing real world war or financial situation that has nothing to do with the game. If your opponent then doesn't respond, then clearly they are doing the first that guy rule of no small talk, for which they must be criticized. Whatever you do, whatever you say, that guy must win the argument. Doesn't matter that you're playing a fun game and not having an argument, you are winning the argument. Gaslight. You didn't tell me that unit has fight first. I wouldn't have moved closer to them in the movement phase if you had told me. Now, obviously, your opponent did tell you both when they deployed and in the movement phase. But now you have a reason why you made a mistake. You forgot it's clearly your opponent's fault. No one expects you to know all of your opponent's rules. But the point is of gaslighting, you lie about what your opponent has told you. And if they let you take something back so that you can not make such a stupid decision, double down. Make the stupid decision and claim your opponent is the worst person ever. The Reductor Saboteur sets off a bomb within 12 inches. Uh, you told me it was 9 inches. I wouldn't have moved closer if you said it was 12. No, no, it's done now. You roll the dice, you take the mortal wounds. I hate you. That is what that guy needs to say. But when your opponent does something, make sure you insult their tactical decision. Make them feel bad for moving a unit there or for shooting one of your units and not another one. Refuse to elaborate, but be sure to scoff derisively. A derisive scoff should come from the diaphragm. Really move your body with it. Huh. Huh. Things like that. Insult them if they even start to say a rule wrong. Just an everyday slip of the tongue. Uh, fails on a 5 plus? No, no, I think you'll find that I succeed on a 5 plus. Thank you very much. And then remember, from the diaphragm, huh. Insult the club organizer. You know, the person that put all this together, made sure that you had a room and gaming stuff, that everyone got together at the same time and place, they advertised it, they got in help where required, they run stuff without necessarily playing a game themselves, the whole point of the club, them. Make sure you insult them. Oh, and don't pay any membership fees. Make sure you forgot, you'll do it later. Why should you pay as much to upkeep the club and rent the building compared to the people who are playing a much longer 2000 point game? Not fair. Luck. Always bemoan bad luck, especially when it is good luck. It is unlikely that you would kill five models with your seven attacks, but come on! There clearly should have been more dead. One failed two plus save out of eight? Don't think about the odds. That is unfair. You should point and complain about it. Both of your 10 inch charges should have been made on 2d6. This is clearly an awful game. Your good luck is not good enough and your bad luck is perhaps a reason why you should threaten to just pack up and leave. Don't make it a flash of annoyance, really labour the point. That way, your opponent will feel slightly bad for you and they will give you dispensations. Or they'll get very annoyed themselves, make tactical mistakes which you can mock them for, and then the game is more likely to be won. Use irony in a very limited sense. Ironically, praise the governments of Italy, Spain and Germany from the 1930s and 40s. Or don't even be ironic about it. Play Flames of War as the Germans and gush over how they were clearly superior. This is a Veraboo. If you think the British did nothing wrong in World War II, you are a Tiaboo. There isn't a name for thinking the French are the best, because no one thinks the French are the best. Moving on. Let's talk about army selection. So bring two lists, but don't mention that you have two lists. One is very anti-horde, one is very anti-vehicle. If your opponent is trying the Tyranid Endless Swarm, you choose the anti-horde. Playing against Imperial Knights? Use the anti-vehicle list. If you knew beforehand which army your opponent was bringing, then tailor your list to defeat it. See how much anti psycho weapons you can fit in to play against Thousand Sons. What a coincidence that you just happen to have that. Now, a rookie mistake for all the aspiring that guys is to bring two lists, but let your opponent pick. No, don't do that. Do not bring two lists and let your opponent pick or check what they have and then choose the list to have the most fun for your casual pickup game. What are you doing? Do you even want to be that guy? Now, some amount of list tailoring may be acceptable, but as that guy, you need to be willing to go a step further and make sure the game is no fun for your opponent and will only lead to victory for your army. If it doesn't, see the points above for complaining the whole time. 
And when we're picking points, go about 5% more than the points allow. So for a 2000 point army, you are taking 2100 points. Morally it's fine, I'm sure that Eldar were over nerfed anyway. Oh, that just raised some heart rates. Fun, fun, this video is about fun. But unless your opponent goes over the list and knows the current points off by heart, no one does, then they won't notice the altered points value or it doesn't matter that they don't add up to 2000 points. That gives you an edge. And when you are picking your models, every single model is a counts as. A few things are fine, I have a video on it, but make sure everything is proxied as the most optimal weapon to destroy your enemy. This isn't just to try out a tank that you don't have before you buy it. All of your rhinos are actually land raiders with massive guns. You just can't see that every identical rhino represents a different kind of land raider. Let's talk about the gameplay moves. You're gonna do the wrong thing, deliberately, but you need to do it with deniability, like using a version of a rule from a past edition. Claim not to know that deploying a character alone doesn't give you lone operative. See, some people watching didn't know that you could do that, or how the rules worked, but you are that guy and you want to blend into ignorance. People will rarely call you stupid for not understanding a rule or misremembering something. Of course, you will call them stupid because you are that guy. Part of the game is going to be rolling dice. Don't use a dice tray. Roll the dice behind a big building or something like a tank that your opponent can't see past. Pick up a few misses and add them to your wound rolls. If the dice looks cocked and it's probably going to come down to be a hit, that's fine. It was a hit. But if it's a one on a slight slant of a hill, call that cocked and reroll it quickly. When you are going to be measuring to move your units, you're going to be measuring a little bit further than normal. Now do not do this on the first turn. You will get caught out. If you know that you are 24 inches apart, then it's going to be obvious if your 5 inch move model with an 18 inch range gun is suddenly in range on the first turn. Also don't just do the old simple move from the front of the base but measure to the back of the base. On bigger models it's obvious that the terminator has moved about 7 inches. So just go for a little bit extra. Five and a half inches. That can be enough to change a fail charge into a just succeeds because you get with an engagement range charge. Never tell your opponent about your unit abilities. If one of your units has fight first, be sure to never mention it. And if they ask, remember before, uh, I think I did tell you about fight first. I did it when I deployed. I did it in the first turn. Come on, I told you enough times. If a unit is unusual and has lone operative or equivalent, don't mention it. You could even show your opponent your Eldar Rangers, but then not mention that when paired with Night Spear, then they get lone operative. Oh dear, your opponent just wasted a unit's move to shoot at something that they couldn't shoot at. I guess that's just how the game works. They'll know for next time. Let me know if you are seething yet or this is just too standard. I can go further, you know. It can get worse. As well as not explaining how your units work and what kind of abilities they have, don't explain your stratagems either. The number of stratagems has been toned down for 10th edition. There are not as many as before, but if you have a codex, then you have a lot of detachments to choose from. So your opponent is less likely to know all of them and which ones go with which detachment. And if you happen to have a really good one for one detachment that you're not running today, who's gonna know? Who's gonna tell? Certainly not you. Not that guy. <laughs> And sequencing. Never let your opponent do something out of sequence. If they put reserves down in the middle of the movement phase, then they must not be allowed to move anything else in the movement phase. They have made their choice. Even if the reserves would have no effect on any other movement. No, no. Rules as written, the reserve step is a different part of the movement phase. No sportsmanship. Only brutal rules as written. Of course, if you declare a charge before shooting with the last unit you forgot on the other side of the board, then oopsie, doesn't matter. It would have no in-game effect on the unit charging. Just try not to put your own inconsistencies in how you would like to rule things too close together in the game. Next step is cheating. Never mind any of this gently gently or mildly annoying things, this is just full on cheating. Now some that guys will advocate for lying about the number of victory points scored in the battle, but that is too easy to check. 
better to rig the game massively in your favour instead of just lying about it. Anyone can lie. And speaking of lying, lie about what abilities your units have. Stealth units, they have scout and infiltrate and lone operative. Of course they do, they are stealth suits. It sounds right, and your opponent will want this game to just be over. They're not going to check. Bring your own dice. Now a dice that always lands on a six is going to be found out. But having a few dice in a pool that have three pips where they should have two pips, or replace the two with another five so that you never roll a two, a number that is often a fail but you can't re-roll with abilities like being able to re-roll any ones. And a few more fives than normal won't raise your opponent's suspicions too much. Is this too real? Dice like these cost a lot extra to buy or make, but you are already in a very expensive hobby. In for a penny, in for a pound. Does this take away the feeling of victory to have cheated your way there? No, of course not. Winning is all that matters. Not time with friends, not enjoying a shared experience. No, you are that guy. You play on a totally different level. You use a different skill set for victory. How well you cheat, not how well you play the game. The ending. Winning and losing. It isn't about the winning, it is about making it no fun for your opponent. To flip a table, only do this when you have been completely wiped out and all of your models are off the table. Try and get your arms deep under the table, about a quarter of the way along, before lifting with your knees. If you're too close to the edge, you will just push the table towards your opponent. If you get too close to the middle, then you'll be lifting up the table, not flipping it. Make sure you use those forearms. But maybe table flipping is too much of a cliche for you. You are a modern that guy. So you must talk about this loss in the context of the game. The brokenness of their army. The horribleness of the player. The mess of the meta. The OP powers even Gretchen have. A 4 plus? You get a command point and a 4 plus for some little runt? This is clear orc bias. Sisters get to substitute dice. Oh, that is worse than Eldar. And sisters can get loads of miracle dice during the game. Eldar are capped at six. Don't talk about guardians. They're capped at six. Diminish any kind of good feeling your opponent had at winning a game popular among teenagers. Actually, perhaps it would be better to concede on turn two. Then your opponent won't have time for another game, so their night is over. You had a thing you forgot or claim you didn't even realize 40k took more than an hour to play. That's what you do when things are going badly. Oh wait, I won? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, better luck next time, buddy! Woo! Have I missed any points so far? Oh, probably. The comments can always be there to help aspiring that guys to know what else is totally unacceptable to our lovely community. And you can find out about the nicest gamers that you will meet as a palate cleanser. And the next time you meet that guy, you can look back on this video and smile, knowing that they have come so far. My darlings and viewers and that guy, have a great day of 40k.